Welcome to the Lemonade Stand Stories podcast. Tune in every Thursday as we share inspirational stories from the world's greatest creators, entrepreneurs, and go-getters about how they've turned life's lemons into lemonade. And now, here's your host of Lemonade Stand Stories, Sharon Prabaka. What is going on, guys? This is Sharon Prabaka with the Lemonade Stand Stories podcast. <sighs> and today is a good day. It's a good day. It's a good feeling day because across from me, sits a very, very beloved human being. One that I've had the pleasure of knowing for many, many, many years, so much so that when he was a wee lad of maybe 10 or nine years old, I would spin him around in his PJs, in his Batman PJs. And he loved it and he kept saying, please, Charon, more, more. And as the years kept going on, he kept asking for it. I'm like, Chris, this is getting a little weird now. You're an adult, but <laughs> no, let's still. continue to do that. All right, please. let's continue. It's a, it's a good tradition. Sharon, you changed start, you changed my diapers. We, Come on. We started with a good thing, and yeah, I did change your diapers. It was weird that you were wearing them at ten, but it's fine. It's still wearing them. Yep, it's, it's fine. It's fine. No judgment here and there. No, dude, we've known each other for so long. I've been uh, good, you know, friends of the family for. A long time uh, because your oldest brother, Don, and I were in high school together and I was mm -hmm. sandwiched between Don and Jeremy. Um, and yeah, we just had so many fun memories. But what's been really cool, <coughs> excuse me, is, you know, I've always known you as like, because you were the fourth child, right? Yep. You're the fourth child. And so I always remember like, you know, you were just like a, just a young little kid and it was and it was great. But then something happened when numbers and age just disappeared. And it was like, I think it was a time I happened to move to California and then you moved to California and you lived very close to me. Well, I think we had a lot of commonality too we at that point. We had a ton point, of commonality. You know, being yeah. in, in film and music and just the arts, it was just like, what? Yes. We're friends now. Like, this is cool. Like, yeah. You're not just like the older brother anymore. Because no. you were kind of part of the family. I was kind of part of the family, you know, Sharon Osman, as they would say. Yeah. It, it, it as I would say. Flows yeah. off the tongue. Yeah, yeah it really does. <laughs> but, uh, but no, we did. And we had like so many fun memories together in California. And then that's when I was like, okay, I think Chris is my favorite Osmond of the voice. Just because Ooh, we- I got the stamp of approval. You got the stamp of approval. No, it's, it's true. Like we just had so many fun memories together. Um, I remember, do you remember that taco place that we'd go and get like that? Oh, of course that I Middle do. Eastern taco. Yes. <laughs> That's the best. You know, we'd go get that. Well, and you would come over all the time. Yes. You know, when my wife and I moved out there, you were, you were there quite a bit. Yes. We played tennis together. We played tennis together. I'm going to talk a little we'd bit about that. have long chats together, movie yes. nights. There were so many movie nights. Uh, you lived in uh, a pool house. Oh, dude. Quite some time. I could write a book about pool house hopping. Okay, tell me more about this real quick. I mean, my wife and I lived in probably three pool houses before wow. we got our own apartment. There is an art to that. Yeah, tell okay? me about this art, yeah. Well, it's the art of not finding our roots at any place, you yeah. know? We were just yeah. bouncing around. Yeah. But you... I, LA was a good experience, though. Yeah. It was, it was eye-opening. Yeah. I miss it. I do love Utah. Utah's my roots, and we'll yeah. always come back here. But I think that was the time when I realized, you know what? I need to pursue music. Yeah. I need to open up that door because yeah. I was so hesitant doing it at a younger age. And seeing you do everything in LA and, and mm. um, yeah. acting and all that, it, it was just, it was invigorating. It was eye opening and it was, it was fun. It was exciting. It was nerve wracking. You know, it's interesting because I remember, um, I mean, I always wanted to act and kind of, and I was kind of doing my thing, but I remember like Don and Jeremy and stuff, like they were kind of dabbling a little bit in music. Don was playing the drums and all this stuff. And then they went off and got different things and whatnot, yeah. right? I know it's, and, it's kind of, everybody had their different journey, right? Right. You know, Jeremy is a physical therapist. He went down the medical route. Um, Don did marketing. He mm -hmm. got a master's and everything with that. Um, and Brandon did, you know, Brandon was the one that actually did a little bit yeah, more did. than anybody else at that time. Right. Um, he performed in front of a lot of people. Um, you know, Jeremy and Don and Brandon, they went on tour with my dad and performed. I didn't know this. Oh yeah. Yeah. They did uh, a tour out in Europe with him. Mm. And that was kind of the first experience for me to see that. I'm like, wow, like maybe I could do this. I was too young at the time. Right. I probably would have been a background dancer or something, you know. Whatever. Well, you would have been a great background I, dancer. I know, I should have done it. Well, you know. But yeah, and then my younger brother, you know, he's he's in school still. Yeah. And 
studying finance. I know. You know, it's I'm crazy. Like, and then there's me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, no, well, I'll dude. just use my vocal cords. <laughs> no. You know what? It's, it's interesting because, you know, you when your dad is Donny Osmond and he's a, such a famous guy and he's like done so many wonderful things and like has been an, a, like an icon for so many people, which was weird because, you know, growing up with your family, I never really saw him as that until like I went and saw like a show, I think in New York, he played Gaston, mm-hmm. Beauty and the Beast. And I saw all these women like like flocking and screaming at his, him and, and everything in his name. And I'm like, what is going on right now? Like this is, I feel weird, you know, well, for you. <laughs> I know it is next you know? level. But here's the thing. Like, yeah, for me, I had no idea who he was. Yeah. As a kid, wow, I just okay. thought this is a guy with a job and he's got dad jokes. Yeah. And you they're know? terrible dad and jokes. T- yeah. And he says them. It's the same joke every week. Yeah. Thinking that we sudden. may have forgotten. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. The funniest part is watching him laugh at his own joke. Yeah. Anyway, but it was... The funniest part is laughing, watching him laugh before the punchline. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't even give it a Yeah, point. Yeah. Anyway, but that's the going. thing. Like, I didn't realize who he was until, honestly, in my teens. I mean, yeah, he was doing Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Mm-hmm. That was big. That was in the 90s. That was... Sure. I'm a 90s boy, and I was growing up in that... And I just thought that was that was really exciting. It was fun to see. And then he did Mulan. And I think that was really the point where all of my friends were like, oh, my gosh, he's Captain Shang. Yeah. What? Yeah. That's so cool. And then seeing him do his tours in England, massive 50,000 people. I mean, yeah, it's insane. Huge. Um, and then random things like he would do the Olympics with the torch. And he was on Pyramid mm-hmm. hosting that. And then he did his show in Vegas with his sister, the talk show even back in yeah, the day. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And I just began to realize, okay, this is this is a guy that's got a lot more traction under his belt than I ever realized. Yeah. And in my teens, that was really when I was like, I, I, want, I want to try music. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. And so I started producing some stuff on my own i got my own little computer my keyboard this was it was terrible stuff dude well dude it was so bad if you don't if, if you remember um so when you were a kid my my i you know went on an lds mission and my mission companion taught you the piano do you remember that oh yeah uh, so john john chan yeah john he, chan he taught your he taught you piano when you were a kid i remember yep. and we'd like i'd always bring him by to your house because I could never trust him to drive by himself to you come to your house because he would get lost. <laughs> yeah. uh, and so that was like, I was like, I'd always take him over and like he would teach you piano. And and I remember we were just getting started. And then, you know, we'd been doing this for like a long while. And then this is one day when I remember I was hanging out, talking to your mom probably in the living room. And then John comes out and the piano's still playing. And we're like, what the heck? And we're like, yeah, that's Chris. And I'm like, wait, what? Well, you know, John was the one yeah. that really catapulted me into loving piano and loving music hmm, okay because i've i had several piano teachers prior to john okay and i was doing all the classical stuff i was doing all the scales which look y- you need to learn that and yeah. there are people out there that play that type of music and they are incredible at it just wasn't my passion at the time and i was just like i want to play Coldplay. yeah i want to play clocks just just teach me that yeah. and john was the one that's like all right let's do it so I learned all of these different songs. They were pop songs. And then I did learn some of the class classic ones, like mm-hmm. Claire de Lune. That was a big one. Yeah. But that really opened my eyes. And I think the training, too, helped me to take me to the next level a little bit. Yeah. To get in front of people and perform. But a real big defining moment was when I was on my mission. Mm-hmm. I wrote a song out there. And... We were doing some fireside things uh, in front of, you know, 100 people, 200 people. Yeah. And I played this song a few times. It's about the atonement. And I just remember seeing afterwards how many people came up, in honestly, in tears, hmm. saying that is exactly what I needed to hear. It, it's amazing how music brings us all together. It truly does. It brings us all together. Totally. The world together. So that was the first experience where I'm like, oh my gosh. So I recorded it. I, I haven't released it. Um, it's kind of a personal song of mine and, and I share it with uh, you know, people in my in my circle. But after that, I was like, all right, I really need to do this. Yeah. But I thought at the time, 
I should probably get a degree. Yeah. So I went yeah. and got my degree in marketing. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because when I moved to LA and then like, I know you moved, I, what, what year did you move to LA? I forgot. Uh, that would have been 2018. You moved to LA in 2018? No, well, no. I did an internship in 2016. Okay. And then at the end of 2017 is when we went. When you guys actually moved there. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about 2016 because you did the internship there and you did an internship at Disney. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And I remember when you came out there and it was so funny because, oh my gosh, I, I can't even tell you the, the countless text messages I got from like your mom and your dad. They're like, okay, Chris is coming out. Okay. I need you to, we, we need you to watch out for him. And you're we, my guardian. You know, we, need to, <laughs> we need you to protect him and, and stuff. And, and we, you know, we were like meeting in the same church building and, and all that stuff, even though we were like in two separate wards. But I remember um, that was the time I felt like we really connected. Yeah. Like on a level where it was like, oh, we we speak the same language and we're like, see, you know, age didn't matter. It was like, no, we're just buddies and we get to go do fun stuff together. And yeah. you were, and I didn't even know you wanted to perform because you were doing sound engineering at Disney, right? Well, yeah. I mean, back up just a minute. I sure. was doing BYU TV. Oh, okay, I was yeah. doing all the sound for Studio C, I do American this. Ride, yeah. um, the Story Trek. And that was kind of my jump into trying to tap into the music world, into mm -hmm. the sound world a little bit. And that's why the Disney internship opened up because I got proficient into in doing post-production sound. Right. So going out there that summer, it was super fun. It was exciting. Yeah. You and I were hanging out. And I think the reason why we really connected mm. is we both had left U utah we're both kind of on our own we're figuring it out out there yeah so we're problem we're problem solving out there trying to figure out hey what's the what's next, next biggest thing how yeah. can we help each other and it was awesome like i remember like we would have like so many cool chats but the one that really st stuck out with me which i pretty sure you remember is we went and played tennis one one uh, one day and it was that day that you confided in me um, that you struggled with a bit of anxiety. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. And, I remember and some that. challenges and, and all that stuff. And we were like kind of really talking about that and what that looked like and what that felt like. And it's interesting because I know your dad struggled with a lot of anxiety. You know, he, a lot of like in performing and all that stuff. And I don't think you knew this story, but when I was about 22, um, I had some severe panic attacks, weird anxiety, just like hitting me out of nowhere. It was just really bizarre. And I actually went to your house and I talked to your dad about it. And I also talked to your Aunt Marie, but I talked to your dad about it. And he, I remember he was sitting and playing with Josh and he gave me some incredible advice. And, and it like really helped me out a ton at the time. And it like really helped shape me and everything. So when I heard that you were uh, kind of facing the same type of anxiety, you know, I just thought it was like really interesting. And it was like, it's almost like a full circle type of thing, you know, to, like your dad helped me. And now I was like able to listen to what you were saying. But like, what were some of the challenges that you were facing at the time? Because I know we were living in a time and a place of total uncertainty, yeah. which doesn't help with anxiety. So, no, I mean, yeah. look, I, I've had panic attacks and I've had some serious anxieties and whether it's genetic I don't know or if it's just life itself yeah no. it's rough and you know growing up in this family presents its own pressures completely you almost have to my dad grew up in a family where it's like you can't drink root beer because it looks like coke oh my gosh you know yeah, that's or amazing. yeah you have to be perfectly straight on that straight and narrow otherwise you'll be criticized and because you're kind of the face of being what it means to be lds and being strong in in this church um so i i felt like i had a lot of that pressure on myself as well granted i wasn't so much in the limelight but i was making all this music in my closet you know and never really wanted to get out and perform because I felt, how am I going to measure up to this? How am I going to fit in his shoes? Yeah. And I was going to ask you about that. Like, did you ever, did you face a lot of that? that oh, feeling? absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I just, I put myself at a lower bar 
thinking I could never sing as well as my dad Mm -hmm. because he is just, he's up here. I mean, he's way up here and I, I don't have all the training. I didn't start at five years old like he did. Mm -hmm. I'm starting from ground zero. Yeah. And like I said, it wasn't until my mission that I played some music in front of people that I was like, Oh my gosh, like maybe I could do this, but it carried on. I mean, even after my mission and when we met up in LA and talked about those anxieties, that was a heavy thing for me at the time. I remember coming back after my internship, I was at BYU living in an apartment close to seven peaks or what it was called back then. Yeah. And there were so many pressures going on. I mean, finals were coming up and you know, just dating in general was just tough and there were things going on with my friends and and the family at at the time. And I remember having my first panic attack seizing up. Mm. I could not even think I had to get in my car, which was dangerous in and of itself. And I started driving and I remember I could not even move my arms because I was so stiff screaming at the top of my lungs. I've never shared this story before. This is, um, and I remember the the only person that I could call at the time was my dad. Hmm. And I knew that he would answer. He would always answer, no matter what he was in. Even if he was on Good Morning America, he would probably text and say, hey, is this urgent? Because I'll get off the screen right now. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing. You know, your dad's always been there for you guys. Yeah, you know? he has. And, you know, he didn't say much on the phone. I He picked up. And I just said, I, I think I'm going through a panic attack. And I know you've been through this before, but I don't know what to do. And he told me, you know, pull over. Let's just sit down. I will be there in 10 minutes. And he stayed on the phone until he got there. And I got in his car and we, we went to a subway. We both don't really care for subway, but we went to a subway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and sat down there for like an hour and a half. And we just, we didn't say much, but all I needed was his presence. He's like, there's, there's nothing really I could say to just help you through this. Yeah. You kind of just have to endure it. And it calmed my nerves. I, I had it happen a few times, but I just remember having him there was the best thing mm. in that moment, in that time. It's a scary thing, man. It's, it is. It's nuts. And it is. Thankfully, I've been able to kind of grow out of it a little bit. Mm-hmm. There's still pressure. I mean, doing this show last week... Yeah, I was going to ask you about was, that. Was like nerve-wracking in and of itself. Yeah. And you have to learn how to manage that. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you've been through that. Mm-hmm. And praying really hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, it's so interesting. I um, I mean, we both perform, right? We both perform in different ways. And uh, when I get to set, in fact, I was I was just asked, like, do I get nervous? Do I get nervous when I'm ready to act and, and ready to do my thing. And I said, you know, it's an interesting thing what happens to me, in my mind anyway, which is, sure, right before, maybe I may have some jitters. I'm like, okay, this is, I'm getting ready for this and stuff. But the moment they say action, it's like this part of my brain like switches. It's the weirdest thing. And I'm into like this hyper-focused zone where the only person that matters is my scene partner. Right. The crew disappears, everyone disappears. And I'm just there in that moment interacting with them. And then they're like, wow, like that was great. And I'm like, yeah, I, you know, it it wasn't the pressure. And it's I, always the lead up. It's a right? lead up. It's the lead up to it. That's like always like that. That's like the part that cripples you and crumbles you because it's like this anticipation of the future. Yeah. Like what's going to happen? What, what, what do people think about this? So many this? variables, things so that many can variables, happen. Right. But I remember... You know, I was so stoked. My, my buddy Tyler called me up and he's like, hey, I'm going to go to Draper Days and I'd like for you to come. Chris Osmond singing. And I'm like, wait, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> like, wait, Chris Osmond? My Chris Osmond? Is he singing? You know? And so I was like, yeah, I, I got to go check this out. Because I didn't know that you were performing like that. Like, I didn't know. Like, I, I knew you were doing stuff in music, but I always thought it was like behind the scenes. And it was. And it it was, was all behind the scenes a lot of this until stuff. just recently. Until recently, right? But I remember like when you got up on stage and you started singing, like, dude, I was blown away. Oh, thank you. I was blown away. And like your voice was amazing and it was different than your dad's voice and it was your voice and I love that it was your voice. And 
what was cool was I loved your cover or not, not your covers. I loved your originals way more than the covers that you sang. Oh, thank you, man. You know, like there was just something about it where I'm like, oh my gosh, that's a song I would listen to over and over and over again. And I did. And I was telling Sharon's you. Sharon's my like, number one fan, everybody. I'm serious. You guys, yes. seriously, you guys got to check out. Is it Runaway? Is that what it's called? It's or, called Up To You. Up To You. It's called Up To You. It's coming out Monday. Coming out Monday. And we're going to talk about that. But that song, I listened to it so many times uh, in my house. And, and it's like a Dropbox link that you send me. So I have to like rewind it like like old school. Uh, you got the pre-show. Dude. I got the pre-show. That song's interesting because that actually yeah. is about overcoming anxieties. Is it? Yeah, yeah. it's about, it, it really is about growing up and almost leaving the nest and creating your own brand, your own self. Yeah. I want to talk to you a little bit about that. I want to talk to you a little bit about finding your own voice. You know, leaving yeah. the nest, finding your own voice. Because... That's one of the things that I feel is so key to my success as an actor has been I've had to like stop pretending I'm like paying attention to what other people are doing. Yeah. What should I do? You know, the, the person that actually gave me the advice to like create my own path and to really find my voice was Ben Stiller. He uh, I hung out with him once and he kept telling me that over and over and over again. Like that was like the, the key. Right. And it never and I was like, yeah, that sounds great. But it never really stuck with me until like much later on. Where I'm like, oh, I think it legitimately means what is does my voice sound like? What does my voice, you know, feel like? Absolutely. And, you know, and it was interesting because going back to music, I love it. Just love it when I find music that not just speaks to me, but makes me want to listen to the song over and over again. Yeah. And that's what your music legitimately did. You know? Well, I speaking to that, I think you have to talk about the people that are in your corner, mm -hmm. your biggest advocates. Um, you need that. You need people on the sideline cheering you on. Yeah. But guess what? There are going to be those people out there that won't cheer you on. And I've had several of those. There are a lot of people out there that are, that will tear you down, mm. you know, just say, Hey, maybe you need to kind of, they'll say it in a polite way, but it's like, you know, where are you going, man? Like, yeah. <laughs> is this producing anything? And it's like, I, I don't need to hear that right now. Yeah. And I really have had to learn how to make that just bounce right off my head. Yeah. And continue on. But, you know, my biggest advocate is my wife. Really? Oh, my gosh. Alpha yeah. loves it, huh? Oh. And she, which is, it says a lot, though, about a spouse because it's a, it's a big step forward. Yeah. Uh, it's a leap of faith because it's like, this may not produce anything at all. Right. Am I wasting my time? And I'm sure you've been through those moments where you're questioning yourself. I'm like, ah, what do I do? Like, yeah. I'm not going anywhere right now. It's stagnant. Like I had all this success and then there's nothing, you know? But I think it's persistence. It really is. And yeah. she's she's told me, it's like, you got to be persistent. You got to keep working at it. Otherwise, nothing's going to come of it. Yeah. Obviously, I'm in a situation where you got to keep a roof over your head, right? You have to. And thankfully, I've got other things that that do that. But life is too short mm -hmm. to not follow your passion. My dad just released an album last year called Start Again. And the, the song in there called Start Again is I actually played it at the show. Yes, I remember that one. And it's all about chasing your dreams. No matter how young or how old you are, it really is never too late to start again. Yeah. And to be who you want to be authentically. Mm -hmm. Um. So it's it's been a journey to try and overcome that. But I've had to learn to kind of set some of those people aside that mm -hmm. don't necessarily tear me down, but don't build you up. Build me up. Right. Yeah. And and then really it's interesting to see when you do something very vulnerable, like the show last week, how many people come to the table and say, You were amazing. Like I'm cheering you on. And you yeah. were one of those. Yeah. And it, it just makes you feel so good that it's like, all right, I think I'm headed down the right path. I mean, how many people would you reckon were there? Like thousands? I, you know, I've asked a few people. And it, it's funny that you mentioned where, you know, the lead up is you're like out of your mind and then you get on stage or you're in front of a camera and everything melts away. Yeah. Well, that's what happened. I, everything melted away. I had no idea how many people were out there. Mm -hmm. But somebody told me it was like ten to 12,000 people. Yeah. It, and I was just like... Okay. Yeah. Sounds great. You know, I was freaking out after the show yeah. when I heard that. I was like, okay, man, this is yeah. sweet. Yeah. That's amazing. 
No, dude, there were so many people and, and it was awesome. And what was so cool is like, you're a great front man, you know, you're a great front man, you have a great presence. But it was just like, I, I was like thinking of like Brandon Flowers, I was thinking of Chris Martin, I was thinking of all these these people that I'm like, yeah, I love, I love their music. Uh, D- Dan Reynolds, Imagine Dragons, you mm-hmm. know. And I was just thinking like, wow, you have this ability, you, you know, to like c- capture an audience. And I, I remember like a lot of times, I hear bands that play songs, but if the if the lead singer is not that great, I just can't get behind it. I can't. And your vocals were so spot on and so amazing. And I didn't know you could sing that high. And it was amazing. You know? Well, I didn't either until yeah. I got vocal lessons. Yeah. And that's really what helped. But yeah. no, thank you. Those are my big heroes. I, I grew up on Coldplay and Killers and Imagine Dragons, all yeah. those. And yeah, so you were, you were great, you know? Y- you and, know, I think the the art of performing and i learned this from my dad he's like you know anybody can get up there and sing there's so much talent out there on youtube you can find amazing singers it's the people that know how to do the transitions in between the songs is everything okay it's the talking points people don't understand that but it's like there's gaps what do you fill it with sure it just has to be completely dialed, and that's that's probably one of the biggest things I learned from him. Just watching him all these years, yeah, stage presence and and just talking with the crowd and engaging with the crowd. You know, it was interesting because like I've been to his show several times. The one when when he was doing it with Marie, and um, I remember like th- that was one of the first things I noticed was like, wow, he's got incredible stage presence. Like he knows how to work the audience, and they just yeah. are loving it, and they're eating it up. And oh, yeah. I think it's, I think that's a great quality to have. Yeah. I, I'm glad that he was there to do it with me. Mm-hmm. If you knew what had happened prior to the show. Wait, what do you mean? Okay. You, gotta, you have to tell okay, us now. So this, this was nuts. Like okay. talking about getting into the fire, my first show, major show. Yeah. This was it. So I show up at like one. Okay. Uh, I the, just, uh, the day of, yeah, the day of So Friday or Saturday. This was Saturday. Okay. I show up early. Cause I'm like, I want to get a lay of the land. I want to check out the stage, watch the other performers do their sound check. They do a whole run through. It just ran smoothly. Our sound check was at three 30 and it was blazing hot. Like it was a hundred degrees that day. So I'm already sweating before I'm on the stage. Right. Yeah. So I had to have like 10 shirts that day. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, my dad shows up, and we have the whole system on his computer and the console and everything. All the instruments, we're hooking them up. And the son had, like, fried his computer. Okay. Wait, what? What do you mean? Like It, it, just, it, it was... just did not work. Oh, wow. Okay. You couldn't open anything. It was just spinning. Okay. Oh, dear. I had no show. There was no sound coming through the speakers when we started our sound check. No way. And we ha- we were going through... Like plan A to B, C. We were down to like plan H, okay? okay. <laughs> and I'm just praying. I go back to the RV. They had these RVs in the back. And I go back and I'm just praying. I'm like, please. Yeah. Let the heavens open. There's yeah. nothing. This is my first show. Yeah. And it'll be my last if it yeah. doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> and my dad brought his sound guys from Vegas. We all put our heads together. And we worked really hard for like two hours straight. We had no sound check at all. Mm. And we're 20 minutes to live oh my god still not working somehow we got it to cool down with some ice bags or whatever it was it was a miracle and it started working five minutes before it all popped on and they're like (laughs) you've got it i had no sound check and i run up on stage and i'm like What's up, everyone? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> oh my gosh, so dude, that's amazing. We had a dress, re- yeah, we had a dress rehearsal for the live show. For the live show, yeah. And it turned out we had to add more songs because the headliner canceled forty-eight hours before. Colin Ray, he yes, canceled. I heard about. He got that. COVID, so yeah, they're COVID. like, Chris, you need to put in more songs. I'm like, I, my musicians can't learn this stuff overnight. Well, I sent it to them overnight, and somehow they had like learned it. Mm. so we extended our set and we rocked it dude it was amazing it was incredible it worked it was it was a miracle honestly yeah it was a great experience but it was also good for me to go through the fire and and just fill it out because my dad's like look you're gonna run into this this is 
this is part of your career. Yeah. You've got to learn how to deal with it under pressure and find a solution. And if nothing's working, you still get up there and you give them a show. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, geez. That sounds utterly terrifying yeah but yeah, it uh, was. i'm glad talk about an anxiety <laughs> panic know. attack I that know, was exactly. that yeah like, it worked out it was wonderful it, it was, was amazing. it was a great show um so dude i want to uh talk to you a little bit like change the topics a little bit so part of the the lemonade stand stories podcast is about people's lemonade stand stories so to have a lemonade story you have to have lemons first so was there ever a moment in your life where you were dealt severe lemons and you were able to switch it over to lemonade? It's a good question. Um, you know, well, actually, it was it was when I was at BYU. I was planning to be part of the business school. Okay. And I had taken all of these courses, econ, yeah, accounting. Of course. You know it all. Yeah. And... I am not a good test taker by any means. Neither am I. And I learned in that moment, yeah. I'm like, man, this, this is a lemon. <laughs> like, I yeah. just found my lemon and yeah. it's rotting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, terrible. <laughs> and yeah. I was so bummed. I had transferred from UVU, mm -hmm. got my associates over there. And I'm like, I need to be at BYU. Like, that's, that's where I'm supposed to be. And I'm supposed to be in this business school. I'm getting a marketing degree. And I take econ. Everything's smooth sailing. I did all the labs. I had a tutor. And I do that four-hour test at the end, and I got a D. I bombed it. Mm. And I was a little bit older at the time because transferring my credits over, not all of them transferred, so I had to do some generals. And mm -hmm. I felt like my clock was ticking a little bit. I'm like, I need, to, I need to get my degree. Well, I didn't get in. And... It really rocked me. I, I just felt like a failure. A lot of my friends got in, and I didn't know what to do at the time. And I I went to my dad, and I just said, I, I don't know what to do. Like, where do I go from here? And he just said, you know what? You need to pray. Just get down on your knees and pray and figure out where you're, you're taking yourself. Because the only person that's going to tell you what to do is God and yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, you can get answers, but faith without works is dead. And I had to get up and problem solve. Well, my buddy Chase, yeah, he Chase. was he was applying for the advertising program. And I thought, you know what? This might be a, a good alternative route. I was actually thinking of doing sound design at the time, too. And you have to apply for that program. And it's it's somewhat difficult to get in as well. So I'm like, if I don't get in, like I'm done. Mm. Like I'm, I'm flipping burgers over that something. Some, I don't yeah. even know. And you have to submit a video. And in that moment, all the all these applicants were doing videos, these talking head videos, talking about how they're so good at marketing and how they can market themselves and um, make all these beautiful ads. And I'm like, I don't know two things about making an ad, but yeah. uh, I'll just. Yeah, figure something out. So I was like, well, maybe I can do something with sound because that's me. So I went out with a little camera and I recorded all of these random sounds. I hit the side of a trash can. Mm -hmm. I drove past a microphone with a car. Mm -hmm. I did a kickflip on a skateboard mm -hmm. and, you know, hit hit a glass jar. And I put all those sounds together and did this progressive song on top of all these different sounds and created a masterpiece out of just thin out air of out stuff. of nothing. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know if this is going to make it, but whatever. So I submit the thing a couple weeks go by. Cause you don't hear anything. Sure. And I get a call from the Dean and he says, that is the best video submission we have ever had. <laughs> no way. And it went on to be like one of the top examples for like years huh. as like a, a good submission video. They're like, look, we get all of these same videos yeah. over and over again. Do something creative like this that will set you apart. Mm -hmm. And that was just one of those experiences in my life where I'm like, oh my gosh, that really turned into lemonade. 
Yeah. For sure. And that was my right path. Like, yeah, yeah I could have done marketing in the business school, but I thrived in advertising over there. And after I did that video, a lot of opportunities opened up. It was it was so fun. Dude, that is so amazing. I, I love that because that was you using your voice and you realized that your voice was what brought you the results. Exactly. Right? I had an internship. You know, our paths were kind of similar because I was thinking of being a business major. And so I had taken all the main whatever classes. And then the next year I was supposed to do uh, accounting 210 and I was taking that and the day I was there the first day of class I felt this the spirit crushing feeling of like this isn't it this is not my path and so I had to like find my own path oh, yeah. right and it was it was a tough decision but I ended up going on this path uh, MFHD it was like marriage family human human development truthfully I did it because I'm like I just want to do acting and I just want to get out of school as quick as possible but I took an internship and in the internship um, they give like a list of things that you can do to qualify as like, oh yeah, do this and you can get three credit hours. None of those things excited me in the slightest. And I'm like, oh man. But then there's like this little small note that said, if you have something that you might think would fit in this, you bring it to us and we'll see if we can give it to you. And at the time I was teaching snowboarding at Sundance. Yes. You remember that? I do and remember so that. I um I went over there and I said, Hey, I think you should allow me to teach snowboarding as an internship. And they're like, Okay, wait, what? Why? And they said, Well, because through snowboarding, I'm actually helping families have wholesome recreational experiences together. And I get to help them communicate with each other and they get to face a challenge together. But through communicating and helping and building each other up, they can help succeed along the way. And they're like, that makes a lot of sense. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I totally made that up, but it worked. So they gave me the three credit hours, right? At the end, there was like this time for me to do a portfolio. And um, this portfolio, I was like, I was so close to graduating. I just didn't care, you know? I'm like, I don't even care, whatever. And so I'm just going to make this like the most joking, ridiculous portfolio ever. So most people have headshots of them like looking right into the camera and stuff. My headshot was actually a picture of me looking off into the sunset. <laughs> of course you know? it was, Sharon. Of course. And then like there was like these motivational quotes in the bottom of like their pictures. And my motivational quote was, to do is to be, to be is to do. Dooby dooby doo. <laughs> like it's just, it was just so idiotic, right? Everything about it was just like, oh my gosh, like this is hilarious. And I'm like laughing. And I, I showed my friends that the day of, and they were like dying laughing, They're like, oh my gosh, that is so ridiculous. But that's so you, yeah, but it's Karen, so me. I know. But the funny thing was, I, I, knew, I knew I was laughing. I'm like, oh, whatever, I don't care. She looks at it and she's like, this is one of the best portfolios I've ever seen. And See? everyone's like looking at me, like, wait, what? And, and then she said, no, look, I know you guys think it's fun, and it is, but like the moment you read that portfolio, what do you think? And people are like, oh, I guess I want to get to know that person more. Exactly. And they're like, exactly. And that's the same thing that happened with your video, right? Exactly. And the moment they heard that video, they're like, wow, what a unique way to advertise something super cool. I know. Right? Living authentically is yes. always the right way. Always is the right way, you know? It is. And that's been a big, big path and journey for me as well. It's been it's been the thing I have to keep. Well, you're an learning. inspiration to all of us. Well, I appreciate that. You know, it was 2020 for me was when I remember, you know, the world had shut down and I had been praying and I asked God, like, what am I supposed to do at this time? You know, what am I supposed to do? Like the world is shut down. Where should I focus? And he said, Chen. I want you to focus on having more fun. I'm like, wait, what? And I'm like, I just want to make sure I heard you correctly. I heard you saying I have more fun, but I want to make sure. And he's like, no, I need you to have more fun. And he kept saying it over and over. And then I said, why? Why is it so important to you that I have fun? I mean, I love that idea, but why is it so important? And he said, because then you'll finally live authentically. So true. And then I'm like, whoa, have I not lived authentically? And then I started realizing so many of my decisions that I was making was actually based off of someone else's suggestions or other people's narratives, right? Oh, I 100% agree with you. Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. I mean, so, look, yeah. getting my degree, I think it was a, the right thing to do. Um, and it's, again, it's kept things over my roof. Or right. over over my head, yeah. over my roof. I have more things up above the roof. Dude, I understand. You have many roofs. Yeah, I've got yeah. many roofs. Yeah. I wear many yeah. hats. Yeah, you really do. But music is like such an integral part of my life yeah and i have been so happy these last few years 
from getting married and having my little baby mm. and and doing music it's i'm at the top of the world right now no it's so awesome dude i uh i only have three more questions for you yes okay hit it okay what brings you the greatest amount of joy right now my little girl mm. oh man she's so cute. she is just a bundle of joy yeah i i hate going to work every day because i just want to hang out with her yeah for that, sure that's awesome man and and the song that you wrote about her is so incredible oh um, thank you and i hope that you can is, are you releasing that soon? i am gonna release that yep yeah that one that one is awesome okay what is your greatest fear right now my greatest fear you know that's a good question it, it changes quite a bit my greatest fear is it's kind of a good thing, but it's the unknown of what's happening next as far as performing is concerned. Mm. Yeah. Like I said, it's the lead up to it's these the shows. Up. Yeah. That's anxiety ridden. So that it's probably that, but I think that's yeah. a good type of fear. It is. It's like the fear of feeling like, is the sound system going to work? Yeah. yeah. I don't want this happening again, <laughs> yeah. please. Like, yeah. no. <laughs> Thank you. Great lesson. That's my fear. Lesson learned. <laughs> no yeah. music coming through the speakers. Yes. That's my fear. That's That's a good fear. Okay, and the last question is, knowing what you know now, if you could build a time machine and go back in time to the younger Chris Osmond, the one that hadn't left for LA yet, or the one that was having the panic attack in the car, mm. what would you tell that Chris Osmond? Just don't worry. Don't get caught up in, I don't know, just the day-to-day. -day. Just, just live in the present, really. Yeah. And not worry about tomorrow yeah it doesn't get you anywhere and root for yourself like have your heroes but make yourself your hero mm, that's good advice that's what i heard from matthew mcconaughey look at yourself 10 years down the road that's your hero mm. and then keep on going and then 10 years down the road look at yourself 10 years down the road again yeah and go after that go after that I love that, man. That's really great. That's really good stuff. Cause you know, I, I mean, I think I was kind of sharing this with you earlier. One of my biggest problems is like focusing, like where am I supposed to focus my direction? Like I'm, I'm a creator and I want to create and I want to tell stories. Where do I go? But I think going back to being authentic, what speaks the most to my soul exactly. and going after that, like that's what is going to like lead you to the greatest amount of joy. For sure. Right? Exactly. That's awesome, man. Okay. So your album comes out when? So it's a single. It's a single. It's a yeah, single. Yeah, it's coming out Monday. Okay. The 25th. The 25th. And where can people listen to it? So they can find it on Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, Pandora. Mm, Amazon Music. Amazon Music. Yep. It'll okay. be there. YouTube. It'll be everywhere. Okay. So. Awesome. And it, and it's called Up To You. It's called Up To You. Awesome. Well, dude, I am so excited to see your career blossom. Um, Thank you. And I'm excited to see where it goes. You may have fear about where it's going. I have excitement. You know? Oh, no. Yeah. You it's, know? Like I said, it's a good fear. It's It's got momentum. It's got so. momentum. That's awesome. Well, yeah, I'm super excited. I, I love what I lis listened to the other night, and I can't wait to keep repeating it and learning it some more. And I have a movie coming up very soon, and I'm excited to work with you on that and yes. write something to that yes, together. Yes, we need to chat about we that. We will. We will. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much, man. I appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, Sharon. Okay, take care. Thank you. Thanks so much for listening to the Lemonade Stand podcast, and we hope you enjoyed this episode. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast on whatever platform you use to be alerted when we release new episodes. We'd also love to hear your feedback in the reviews, and if you or someone you know has an awesome Lemonade Stand story, please reach out to us on social media and let us know. Thanks so much, and have a great day.